Hey guys, this is Gamer Cab playing the Pokemon Trading Card Game. The last time we managed to get ourselves freaking Kangaskhan, so what I've done is I've taken Lapras out of the deck, deck now instead, because this girl wants a Lapras, because she has a rare Arcanine. And I actually now have the means to trade away the Lapras, so I think I will just do that, because why the hell not, really? I mean, we get ourselves a promotional card out of it, which is always good, and yeah, this Arcanine, I'm not a massive fan, but it's, it's uh, hit and miss, really. I mean, Quick Attack, you know how finicky Quick Attack is, it only does 10 damage on Tails, so it's not that great, though it can be worked off a of double colorless, which is good. And this Arcanine only has one retreat cost, unlike the other one having three. The thing is, this only has 70 HP. The reason for that is Flames of Rage. For 2 Fire Energy, you have to discard them both, but you do 10 extra damage per damage counter on you. So it can do up to 100 damage. I think, personally, the 2 discards is a little bit steep, but it's not a terrible card, so we might well see it used later. Because, yeah, it really isn't that bad, but... It's a little bit... I don't know, because Growlithe takes two energy to attack as well, so... That's the problem in most fire cards, really. Anyway, we have defeated both of those two, and... Yeah, that is basically it. So, we have to fight Joshua now, and if Joshua loses, then we get to play Amy. Which is how things are gonna go, pretty much. I hope. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm using lightning types, so I probably will get this quite easy. But then again, most of my deck is more water, so we're fighting water on water here, and that's quite good, to be honest. I like that. You know, I kind of like using the same types as the, le the leaders against most stuff, because it just makes it interesting. Anyway, he has a tentacle start, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, Krabby is the other... Yeah, he uses a lot of the fossil cards, which are not that good in the first place, so really, I don't care. Uh, gonna trade away the Raichu, because it takes too many energy and I don't have them. And I'm going to get to myself, I think... Am I gonna get... Yeah, I might as well just get Surfing Pikachu, because we haven't seen Surfing Pikachu yet, so why the hell not? Uh, put the other one on the bench, and... Yeah, just gonna attack with this, because, yeah, it's kind of important, really, to be attacking, you know? And Acid for 10 damage, yay! See, it's a 30 HP Pokémon that has the same attack as I've got, 1 Water Energy, 10 damage. What the hell? Seriously, so useless. However, there is one particular use for it, which we will see later that is actually very, very good. But that is a niche use, which is like super ultra mega, you know, Charmander specific. I don't know why Charmander is specific at all, but it is, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's the most specific use ever, but it does have a pretty potent place, and yeah. So next turn, I'm going to kind of be looking for a water energy so that we can hopefully get this done, just do this match. And we do get a water energy, this is good. So just going to retreat out and go with that. The only other card that he uses is Shelter, so yeah, Shelter Cloister. I guess it would be interesting to see that, but really, it's not worth, you know, the stalling the match out, basically. It's not worth it. So, Surfing Pikachu with its lightning-based surf attack. Yeah, I don't know how that works either, but it does. So yeah, we've just KO'd everything with that. And that's why Surfing Pikachu is very good against Water Mirrors. Anyway, Mystery Packs is always good to get. And we got ourselves another Lapras! So, the one I just traded is perfectly fine. Excellent, I like. Also get another Nine Tails, which would, would would be interesting if I was using Pure Fire. It's it's a good card. We've seen what it did, at least. We've seen it do a damage, but yeah. I did the da whatever, shut up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. So basically she gets up in that most horrible two-frame animation thing, and 
Well, yeah, I think I'm just gonna go out flat out play her because I don't need to really read the pack thing. I'll get the pack afterwards, so yeah. Anyway, she uses what is potentially the strongest deck type out of all of the leaders. She uses Rain Dance. I don't know why she plays Seeking, however, because Seeking doesn't really benefit from Rain Dance at all, but whatever. It's a cheap attacker, I guess. But yeah, she plays Rain Dance, and that is scary as hell against most decks. Uh, this is Tankachu. That is good. I've got two Lightning Energies, so we'll go with that. Yeah, it's a very, very scary prospect for a lot of decks to play. Of course, I am using Half Lightning, so that helps. But to be honest, it's not a guaranteed win even when you are using pure um, half lightning as Lucky7 kind of showed because he lost twice against him against her but oh well um, I have no intention of doing that because I already have Pikachu being able to one hit KO these Goldeen this is why 40 HP basics are not good you should really have 50 HP for the best type of basics because yeah you can easily get one shot in and Unfortunately, that's game over, because she has, like, nothing else. That that was sad. Here is me hyping her up, saying that she's got, like, the best deck type out of all of the club leaders, and the game is already over. That is sad. Wow. Um, that's the fastest match as well that we've played so far. <laughs> That is so terrible. <laughs> wow. Yes, you did lose. Okay, so now we have ourselves our fourth medal. I am sorry, I did not expect it to go that fast. <laughs> okay, and we get Laboratory Packs, so I'm definitely playing her again. Because, yeah, I kind of really want Laboratory Packs. There's some stuff which I must get, really, for me to be very happy out of here. And Hitmonlee is not really one of them, so those packs were kind of useless. So yeah, yes, we will play you again at some point soon, and that is fine, but first off, let's see our mouse come up. For some reason, why is my mouse coming up? Whatever. It's been a theme of a lot of stuff in this LP, hasn't it? But anyway, get the pack, uh, read mail, da -de da Ray Amy, Master Water Club, her deck uses Rain Dance, as I said, Blastoise is power, lets her attach lots and lots of water energy per turn. We will see this later, because it is pretty much the strongest deck type of the Oops, sorry, strongest deck type of the game, and it's just damn good. Why would you suggest using medals and the uh, decks from the Psychic Medal Club when that doesn't make sense? Dude, you're stupid. Anyway, mystery pack, we get Moltres. That is absolutely hilarious because it's fire. And it's not lightning weak, actually. It's not even water weak. It's it's not weak to anything. Legendary Pokemon on this game are not weak to anything. It's kind of hilarious. Anyway, Wildfire, I think there was a deck built around this, actually, but it seems horribly inefficient. Because you've got to dis... It's, un it's not like Durant in the game now. You've got to discard energy to discard cards off the opponent's deck. I mean, it's a powerful effect, especially in a game where evolution cards are impossible to get out of the discard pile outside of recycle. But it's not worth it. Dive Bomb, if you flip tails, you do nothing. If you flip heads, it's 80 damage for 4 energy, but it's 4 fire energy, so for a 70 HP Pokemon, it's not really very good. And yeah, whatever. Okay, so I am going to build another deck which is going to be a lot more neutral against her because, yeah. First off though, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show off something in Mason's Laboratory. Because I haven't really done this yet and it's worth doing. Um, here is a deck save machine and you can use this to build decks, obviously. That's the idea of it, but you can also use it to save the decks which you build. So I'm going to save that there just now, and I'm going to probably build it up later, and, well, maybe build it up later. It's a cool idea. The other thing you can do is you can put medals into these, and I have the rock medal, so yep, we'll do that. And you can build the decks which the members of the club used. You can also build one or two extra ones as well, like this one here is not a deck which anybody used but you can build it anyway. 
and most of them are absolutely terrible, of course, but they have the basis of a decent deck, some of them. Like, this one here is built on Dogtrio. Dogtrio's Earthquake, of course, damages your bench, so the idea of this deck is to use Defender in, or in order to block that. Which is pretty cool. It's not a bad effect thing at all. It's also got potions to heal off that damage, so it's, it's built around Dogtrio, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's go ahead and put the other ones in. So we can at least see what her deck was built for. It's obviously Squirtle of Water, Water Blastoise, she uses Seedrus, she uses Sea King, and Lapras. It's not the strongest variant of the deck, but it definitely is a good one anyway. Uh, Professor Oak and Breeder. Breeder's a little bit excessive in this one, I think, but it's there anyway. I guess you can get to Blastoise without Water Turtle and just Rain Dance up. It's pretty good. You should really run more Professor Oak in this sort of deck, though. Uh, she does have a lot of energy retrieving, and we'll see this later. I don't know why she has the energy removal, though. Seems a bit pointless to me, but that's just me. She has no Bill, which of course is a terrible idea. Bill is a free drawing two cards. You should always have Bill, but, you know, that's just that. Uh, lightning, we don't have Lightning. Uh, we have Grass, though, so let's put that in. Uh, we can see Nikki's deck, I guess. It was built on uh, Bulbasaur, obviously, Venusaur, obviously. Venusaur, Executor, and for some reason Valplume is in there as well. I never understood why she uses Valplume. There's a, she is much better in the second game, and that's just that. Uh, we can't build it. What was this? This was uh, Heather's deck, wasn't it? The one that uses the evolutions. For some reason, she uses six evolutions when she only has four EV. I think that's because the Ditto can transform into EV, but that's at random, so it's not reliable, especially not when you're running this. The hell. Still, it's a pretty cool concept, at least. And the last one is down here, right? Science. And we can see Wonders of Science here, and it's Grime and Mark. Yeah, it's pretty much exactly as I said. With the Paragons, it's got four Mewtwo. It's also got this one, which we haven't seen yet. Uh, Psychic does more damage for the energy that's on the opponent, and then... This is why this card didn't... I don't think the card got banned, but the deck which was built for it got banned because it's kind of um, completely retarded. Uh, basically 4 Mewtwo or even just 1 Mewtwo plus 56 to 59 fighting energy, uh, psychic energy is a legitimate deck and it was actually played and this card basically screwed everything because although you know you had to mulligan an awful lot obviously until you got the Mewtwo out but as soon as the Mewtwo got two energy on it, if it was your only Pokemon, it was almost invincible because of this attack here. As you've read by now, discard the Psychic Energy and uh, block everything. It's basically Agility's effect without damage and with a discard. But if all of your other cards in the deck are Psychic Energy, you're always going to have the energy in hand, attach, discard, barrier, attach, discard, barrier, etc. And the opponent has no chance to win, because you just deck out, you just deck him out. The only two ways around that is uh, energy removals and gust of wind, pretty much. And gust of wind only works if they have more than one Mewtwo. So if they only have one Mewtwo out on the bench, yeah, kind of uh, pretty shit to be honest. So energy removal spam was just about it, and that card got pretty much banned as a result. But the card didn't get banned, the deck got banned. And not all the time either, I'm pretty sure of that. But I know there was at least some stuff with that, because I remember reading that, like, years ago. Anyway. Let... Oh, I didn't even... Oh, I haven't even built the deck yet. Rewind. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. Oh, okay, something I didn't quite know. Apparently you are capped to 80 cards. You can't actually add any more than 80 cards to a deck, even though... Obviously, you have to have 60 in order to have a complete deck. That's really weird. I didn't know that. Anyway, uh, built the deck. We are going to name it Royalty because that's pretty much what it is. That's all I'm going to do because this is only a temporary deck anyway, so whatever. Um, 
Yeah, basically, this deck, I am a little bit apprehensive of this, but there's nothing I can do about it, so whatever. It's a stage 2 deck, an entire stage 2 deck. Pretty terrible idea, to be honest, but it's going to have Nido Queen, it's going to have Nido King, and I've got one Victory Bell in there as well. My logic here is that Bellspout Weeping Bell is a very cheap attacker, so we've got that. Kangaskhan, because it's Kangaskhan, and that's good. I'm a little bit worried of this. I would have rather had three switches, maybe even four in this deck, but I don't have more than two, so I'm going to have to just stick with the two. This is why I have uh, that and the fact that I've only got two breeder is why I have item finder in the deck as well now. So I'll discard two cards and I'll get a trainer card back. I've got Gambler because I have Kangaskhan, although it's not that fail safe. And I don't want to Professor Oak away everything. Sometimes, you know, if I've got lots of evolution cards in hand and I can't trade them away, I don't want to discard them because it's impossible to get them back. And that is pretty much it. So we'll save the deck, that's what we'll be using. And yeah, let us go ahead and play a slightly more neutral game here. Because I'm not weak against her, she doesn't play grass weak water types, so... You know, we, we saw her deck, she uses Sea King, she uses Horsey, she uses um, Blastoise. All of them are lightning weak. So it was kind of unfair going in with a lightning deck, I think, but oh well. Uh, we got Nidoran Mail, and we've got Breeder, and we've got Nido King in the first hand, and we have enough energy to use it. Uh, if this thing doesn't die, which it might do actually, because yeah, it's Nidoran Mail, it's only got 40 HP, but if it doesn't die, this could be a very... Oh my god, that's a Lapras. Well, actually no, that's okay. You know, calm down a little bit, because Lapras can't do that much damage that quickly. This is not as bad as it looks. So I'm going to trade away Victory Bell because I don't need it right now and I'm going to get myself a Bell Sprout, I suppose. Or get the Nidoran Female actually because Nidoran Female is good setup. The idea with this deck is that Nidoran Female and Bell Sprout and Kangaskhan can all help out a bit. Nidoran Female can search out Nidorans from the deck and that's of both types. Bellspout can search itself out of the deck, so it sort of fins it a little bit as well. And Kangaskhan just draws, so it's got a lot going for it that way. And if I flip heads here, this would be very good, but of course I don't, so whatever. It doesn't matter in the long run, because... You're a dick. <laughs> That's all I can say to that. You're a dick. Um, yeah, that does not help at all. Um... Okay, maybe this is not going to be quite so easy after all. What am I going to get next? Uh, Nido Queen, Nido King is kind of useless. Um, what do I want to do? I kind of want the Bell Spot, then the Energy, then Queen, then Item Finder, and I'll have Computer Searched by then. So, yeah. Okay, right, so... I need to keep this Nidoran alive, that's the problem here. I do get the Horn Hazard off though, which is good, but I need to keep this thing alive. And if she's going to confuse me, that's going to be very, very difficult. But thank god she does not confuse me. Next turn she can KO, however, and I don't want to breed her into a Nidoran, which is then going to get confused as a Nido King. So I'm going to go out to Nidoran female, and I'm going to Fury Swipes with this. Two heads is pretty good. I'm going to need three if I'm going to knock it out next turn though, and that's assuming no confusion. But maybe... Well, I don't know. See, here's the thing. If I wait long enough... I might be able to get Nido Queen and Nido King out, and then Nido Queen would be very, very good. But uh, I don't know. Well, let's charge up Nidoran Mail anyway, because at the very worst, I have Breeder in hand, and I could work with that. No, okay. So I'm not going to get the KO. I'm only going to get 10 damage on it. That's not bad actually, because Nido Queen is coming next turn. So I could breed her into Nidoqueen. 
which is not a bad idea because she is doing a lot of damage with this thing and that's not what I want to see. So yeah, I'm going to use that just now then. Pokemon Breeder, go into Nido Queen, and that will help me in the short term because Nido Queen will do 20 damage here. And then I think next turn was my item finder. So next turn I can discard a couple of cards, use item finder to get Pokemon Breeder back, and then use Pokemon Breeder to get to Nido King. And Nido King being in play means Nido Queen does 20 more damage. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna discard a and I'm gonna probably just discard a grass energy and a computer. Ah, oh, do I want to discard Computer Surge though? I don't really. I know next turn is a dead draw. Now I'm going to discard the other energy and I'm going to get Breeder back. And then Breeder go with Nido King and that's good. I don't have enough energy for Nido King now of course because I've just discarded them all but I can now use Boyfriends which will do 40 damage instead because Nido King is in play. And I get one energy back, so this is good. Now Squirtle is also going to get one hit KO'd here, so again, she's not really getting anything. Which is really bad. I'm uh, gonna dis dis discard both the energy, and I'm going to get myself a Professor Oak, because I now have no cards left in hand. So Professor Oak is just 7 card draw. Computer search into Professor Oak is a very good play, really. And I have one energy. Fantastic, but I do have... Victory Bell. Wow, this is just Pokemon Breeder abuse here, seriously. Uh, Victory Bell, I'm not going to charge up Victory Bell because as you know it's kind of crap and I don't need to at this point because I have every evolution out of my deck. <laughs> this is hilarious really. And all of her basics have 40 HP. So just having a single Nido Queen in play with Nido King, you know, one Nido King, one Nido Queen is enough. Fantastic. I'm not going to bother trying to show off Nido King. We're going to see Nido King later anyway. I just figured I would build this deck because I wanted a more neutral match. She still didn't get started. I'm not going to play her again. So yeah. It's not really worth showing her off three times. And wow, well, she did use all of her basics, I guess. Another Magnetot. This thing is useless. Come on, game. Seriously, why can't you just give me something half decent? Like that! Polyrath is actually fairly good. I don't think I have enough Poliwhirl for it yet though. But then again, Pokemon Breeder stuff maybe. Uh, it's got Water Gun. Again, it's highly inefficient because it will do 50 for 5 energy. But the best attack it's got is actually Whirlpool, which... See, this is the thing. This is kind of like Butterfree in the sense of it takes 4 energy to do 40 damage and an effect. The thing is, Butterfree takes 4 Grass Energy to do 40 damage and heal 20. This takes 2 gram, two Water and 2 Colorless, which can be 3 Energy if you double Colorless it, and it discards an Energy on the opposing Pokémon. 3 hit KOing the entire game at a bare minimum, 2 hit KOing 80 HP and below, and discarding an Energy every time is a lot more powerful than the healing stuff. And this thing's got 90 HP to go with it too. Both are stage 2, so there's no speed difference that way. So yeah, this thing is really nice. And that is that. So yeah, that was a game, I guess. And there really isn't much else to say. That was pretty much her in a nutshell. There, yeah, that, that, that's just it. There really isn't anything else that I can say about it. Uh, the other thing then, can I use that Poliwhirl thing? Oh, I know I do have enough Poliwhirl, wow, okay. I guess I got more than I thought when I ground, uh, ground for other stuff earlier. Poliwhirl is not that great, really. It's got the Amnesia effect, which is good, and Double Slap is kind of uh, flippy for how many energy it takes. It's only got 60 HP as well, so yeah, it's a bit below the golden standard, but still. Um, hang on a sec, what? I was going to check something else here as well with the Charizard count. I have two Charizard, but I only have one Charmeleon. I still haven't gotten any more Charmeleon? Are you serious? How? 
like, wow. Anyway, uh, yeah, she won't trade until you reset the game again. So, you know what, let's just go ahead and very quickly do that, and that will end the episode. Because resetting actually also does something else for us as well. It gives us some um, Imakuni back, I think. I think that's how it works. Anyway, Charizard, light my fire! Yeah, she wants a Charizard for a Blastoise, basically. So, yeah, I don't need either, to be honest, because Charizard's kind of crap, and Blastoise I have enough of. But, we might as well get it anyway, because it's a trade. Sure, why the hell not? And... I don't know if she gives another card, let me just very quickly reset and check that. Because if she does give another card, I might want it. Uh, let's see. No, she does not. Right, okay, so the Charizard for Blastoise thing was the last one. I guess if you wanted Blastoise that badly, then it's not terrible. But it's not really that awesome, to be honest. Uh, yes, Ishihara wants to trade again. Okay, right, let's very quickly go and do that then. I forgot, restarting the game actually does the Ishihara restart too, so... Da -da -da, looking for Ditto. I think I do have a Ditto actually because I got that. No, I do not. I guess that must have just been a different reset thing. Ditto is out of the laboratory pack, so blah. I don't know. I might get one. I might not. I need to get one though because I need that card. <sighs> Dang it, whatever, I'll get that for next time. So, this has been Gamer Cow playing the Pokemon trading card game. Sorry, Amy kind of didn't live up to the hype. She's much better than that, though, really. If she gets that Blastoise going, she is freaking evil. But she did not, so whatever. And, yeah, basically join us next time when we go and do another club, I guess, after training stuff. Yeah, I get, I'll start another club. I'll probably try and fight Imakuni as well, because I kind of want to do that. But uh, yeah, that's what we'll do. So, see you for that next time.